Yo guys, so we're here at Twin City Cons. It's going down. We've got a special treat for you guys. We got Jason Font, the Red Time Force so Ranger that. himself. That's right guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for, uh, for having me on the fan club. Gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Jason Funk Q&A. It should go without saying, obviously, because he just put the helmet right down. He is the Time Force Red Ranger, Wes Collins, who also reappeared in Super Mega Force, Ninja Steel, and Wild Force. He's also been in Resident Evil Vendetta, Resident Evil 6, and will be in the upcoming Legend of the White Dragon with Jason David Frank and several others. And it has a new show coming out called Brush Brigade. Brush Brigade. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Mr. Jason Vaughn. Hey! Yeah. Wasn't he also a Ninja Steel? What's that? Weren't you also a Ninja Steel? I, I did say that one. <laughs> oh, I didn't oh, he, he got it all. I did. 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 So uh, very excited to be back. I'm actually enjoying the cold. It's, it's kind of a nice change from where I'm where I've been down in uh, in California. But um, thank you, buddy. And um, it's cool to be back. I met a lot of you today. It's it's uh, Friday, but man, I've been signing the whole time. So thank you for being so um, embracing and accepting to me and uh, enjoying meeting you all. Yeah, this is actually my first time in Minnesota. I've been enjoying it, especially the cold. Yep. So with that, right off the bat, we're gonna. I'm gonna ask a couple questions. If any of you have questions, just raise your hand. I'll get to you. Uh, but real quick, obviously, I want to knock out the question that everyone always asks: How did you get into getting into the Power Rangers franchise? Well, I mean, it was uh, you know, I, it was 1997. I moved to Los Angeles, and um, the the background of that is that as an actor, you go out there and you take acting classes, you wait tables, you bartend, you do anything you can to make money. You live in a house with two or three people and um, everyone's just trying to get by, which in hindsight was such a special time. You don't realize it now because you're just trying to struggle. And But I can look back now where I've done very well and I kind of enjoyed the simplicity of that time. But you audition. And before 9-11, um, you come out there and you audition for TV shows and, and small parts of movies. And uh, this was an audition that went well. So I read for Lost Galaxy, didn't get it. I read for Lightspeed Rescue, didn't get it. And then by year three, they brought me back again, and I started doing some soap operas. There was a soap opera called Passions in Fort Charles. So I, I, I started doing those, and um, I thought that was gonna be the direction I went, is in the soap opera world. So three years after, uh, they brought me back again. I thought, man, these guys either like me or they feel sorry for me. One of the two. Um, and the role of Wes is Jason Fawn. That's that's what ends up happening for young actors. You, you, if you're lucky enough to, to wait around long enough and keep working hard, you eventually find a role that kind of fits who you are. And that's, that's who Wes is minus the rich upbringing. I didn't come from a wealthy family. But, um, and so the role was, was kind of fit for me and, and lucky enough I had done enough work to go to how, know how to audition and, and carry myself in a room. And, uh, and there it was. I landed at and never thought I'd be doing this 20 years later, but I am, I am so excited to keep seeing you guys. And, and with that, you've gone into Resident Evil and other stuff. How did Power Rangers open the door for you to go into the other projects that you that you do today? And then after this question, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and we'll start taking your guys' questions. Um, well, it, it's funny because when Power Rangers was on in 2001, it, they thought it was winding down and they sold it to Disney. Um, and Wild well, Force was the first season on Disney. I think it was half and half. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The first half was on Fox Kids and the second half was on ABC that Kids. Right. Um, so I think they thought it was kind of going to be the end, but Disney was going to kind of do its own thing. But when I came off the show in 2001, um, it did, you know, social media wasn't a thing. There wasn't the same fanfare. I could walk around the streets, nobody knew who I was. Um, and then in 2011, and this get back to your question, they said, uh, we want you to come back for a Comic-Con. And I said, well, what's a Comic-Con? I said, you go back and you meet the fans and to you know to celebrate Time Force. And it's this Power Morphic Town with all the seasons. And I thought, no one's gonna want to meet me. 
You know, I mean, you know, like, I know Time Force has become this really special season that's really being celebrated. And I said, well, what if I go there and I'm sitting there in the corner and nobody's come to see me um, because there's been like five other Red Rangers since, and I want to be the guy who's in college coming to the high school prom. You know, like, what's this guy doing here? So they had me do it. I was blown away by how popular my character had become, how Time Force had become. And uh, I just had no idea 10 years later that this whole thing was, was taking place. Fast forward to now, Power Rangers is as popular as it's ever been. I mean, uh, you know, you walk down the street, I've had police officers come up and my God, I'm such a big fan. And now it gets me into a lot of doors for new jobs because people know, everybody knows Power Rangers. They've had experience with it, they've watched it, they know of it. Um, so when they know that you're a Power Ranger or you're doing a, I just did a commercial theater in Tommy Bahamas Furniture. And because of Power Rangers, I'm like, yeah, that's so cool. You know, just wanted to meet the Red Ranger. Like, right, <laughs> you guys want me to walk into a store to buy furniture, then you're gonna pay me all this money, then great. So it's <laughs> led to um, amazing opportunities. And I am eternally grateful to you guys because um, I've gone from Saudi Arabia to Brazil and everywhere in between. And uh, without you guys, I, I've been given um, such a blessed life and I can't thank you enough. All right, any questions from the audience? You, sir. You Actually, first I have two in mind. All right, no. ask, ask one right now because we got the little guy right over there with a question as well, okay? Okay. And then we'll get to your second question after that. Okay, so my first question is, um, when you got called to come in for Power Rangers Super Mac Force, questionable season on its own. <laughs> and, 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 Let, and, let's uh, save the negativity for other panels. I, 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 I wasn't that bad. Like uh, <laughs> when you got called for Super Mac Force and Ninja Steel, um, what was your reaction to that? Very exciting. Um, you know, I had kept uh, Power Rangers keeps a, a kind of a big brother eye out for all of our um, everything we do post Power Rangers. How we handle ourselves on social media, um, you know, how we carry ourselves in our lives, um, if we kept ourselves in shape, like all those things kind of add into that. And you know, it's amazing when you when you 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 work hard and you're a good person, people don't forget that. Um, and I think because of that, Power Rangers has always really kind of liked me uh, for who I am. And when they came back, they wanted to hire, um, they wanted to bring back different seasons. They want to make sure the different ethnicities, different genders, so they split everything up. Um, but they're very aware of the lives you lead on the side. If you're out there doing pictures, people getting, you know, drinking or all that stuff, they'll, they'll push away from you. Um, and my lifestyle is, you know, one where it's centered around my kids, you know, my life, my, you know, I'm, I, I like to work out a lot. So, um, very excited. I was so excited to come back. It was like a, um, a very cool high school reunion because of a lot of the same people. And uh, they should have made more of the episode. Um, you know, those yeah. quick 20 minutes, and you spent all this money to fly us out to New Zealand. They should have well, used us, you know. Yeah, there should have been more of a story. What they ended up doing was they, um, after they released the episodes, they did a special, like, and this was the, the dumb decision that they that Nickelodeon did. They did an extended cut version yeah. at, like, 11 o'clock at night. Right? That's why. Yeah. yeah. And, but they did also then release it separately <laughs> on DVD. DVD. Yep. So the extended version is out there. Wow. But no one yeah. saw it. You're no right. One saw, no I, one I, saw it. Yeah, I, 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 saw I did, but <laughs> if Yeah, it's, it's it's you know, it's kinda of funny because what happened with Power Rangers, they created the show for little kids. And they never thought that little little boys and little girls would grow up and continue to follow from Stoltery. So they thought, okay, we're gonna have these kids that are three to seven, you know, four to eight, wherever the demographic is. They're gonna watch it and then they're gonna move on. So all we're worried about is new toys, new colors, new figures. We'll hire new actors every year because then the, the fans will get too close to them and you don't have to, you know, have to pay ungodly money for us. Um, but they never counted of the nostalgia factor and the show kept going. Um, so I think that they're, they were still trying to figure out, which I think they've now figured out that, you know, people like the nostalgia of the seasons they watched, right? I mean. I'm a big sports fan. Um, I, I would, I mean, if, you know, I mean, I would look at a Chicago Bear. I grew up in Chicago, so I would look at someone that played the Bears team when I was little, and a player that was now, I'm like, you know, I wouldn't think the same. You guys are probably the same way. You probably I, like. I, I can actually attest to that because um, I'm a Capitals fan, mm -hmm. and I was at the Caps on Boker last month, and 
and they were doing stuff with the alumni. And so like the guy who I grew up admiring to try to model my ice hockey game after poorly might I add, was Peter Bonder and he was doing the autograph signing and the photos. So I made a point to do that. But at the same time, we also have a guy like by the name of Alex Oveshkin. Hmm. He was just tearing it up, breaking history at it left and right. So it's kind of a weird one on that one for that side. But, you know, definitely any chance I can see, like, the alumni. The alumni. Yeah. It, it brings you back to when you were that age, and that's the beauty of it. And I don't think they ever accounted for it. But I think they're getting now, like, hey, when we bring in some of the originals, the, the numbers tick up, and that's what they care about. And uh, they're doing the 30-year anniversary special, which you guys all know. Um, and, you know, from what I understand, like, they're not tearing those sets down. So, you know, according to, uh, when I talked to Steve Cardenas last week, he said, hey, we're leaving these sets up. So there might be some more stuff coming down the pipeline. So that's what we're excited for. Well, and that's, that's a big thing for Netflix because they're changing how, when I was talking about this in the music from the Red Tower and fan panel, you know, under Saban and even with Disney, there's always that formula to how the shows were done. You had to have like your moral of the episode, then you had to have your big bad, and then you had to have the, the conundrum, and then the final battle leading into you know the Power Ranger victory. Yeah. And from a lot of stuff that I've been reading with Netflix and Hasbro, they're kind of going away from that, yep. which is leading to sets. You know, as you were saying, sets being left up for future use. Yep. Which is. You know, kind of refreshing for like, you know, let's be honest, a lot of us are adults taking a kid show too seriously sometimes. <laughs> and, um, you know. But we're all that way, right? Yeah. I mean, I've seen guys throw their TVs on the ground when someone loses a, a football game. So yeah. it's like we're all kind of kids at heart and, and, and uh, we all are fans of something and that's just so cool. And, you know, it's funny because I, I think when they recognize that, you guys remember that one episode where they put my, they put um, Sky's. Dad was the Red Time Force Ranger, yeah. and they had some other guy's head on there. Yeah. And um, when that came out, everybody was like, Whoa, "Wait a minute, here! The Red Time Force Ranger is his dad, but that's not Wes. That's not Wes. It's some other dude's face." I think that's when they realized, like, "Oh my God! Like, these everybody's continuing to follow this." And I talked to the producer. I said, "Jonathan, what, why in the world would you put some guy, other guy in my outfit?" He goes, "Well." We didn't think anybody would notice. <laughs> we, just thought, That's funny. we just thought like, hey, everybody moves on. It's a brand new set of kids. Yeah. And so this is just in my dad's the red time for us. And everybody freaked out. And uh, there was like, we didn't think anyone would notice. And we just thought, let's just do it. it. It's not like with the Zordon era where the first three seasons of Mighty Morphin, you essentially had the same team. And then they went over to the Zeo, they went in the Turbo. And then that's when things started to change a little bit going into you know, into in space to end it. And, you know, it's kind of like, I guess people were kind of used to that in a way. Yep. And then when they did the format change going from in space to Logs Galaxy and you know, down the pipe, you know, it was, you know, maybe people didn't want to accept that, and, you know, and especially the long time viewers. Yeah. What got me was in SPD, they reused the in space outfits for A Squad yeah. and thought yeah. nobody would notice. <laughs> yeah. And they changed black to green. I'm like, dude, that's in space. Stop it. So, yeah. I want to go to that. And they see it now. I want to go to that young man in the Mario outfit. You had a question for Mario. Me? Um, what is your favorite episode of, um, of Time Force? Of Time yeah. Well, I. I answered that two different ways. I, I thought Movie Madness was really well done. So good. I actually um, interviewed Vernon Wells and he talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, people loved that episode. Yeah, Movie Madness was my favorite. They put a lot of time and effort into that one. We filmed in the universe a lot, which was really cool. So Movie Madness, I think, was the best episode. But End of Time was all about Wes. Uh, the last three episodes was all about you know him giving up his life for his friends. Um, the ultimate act of selflessness, right? So. Uh, I thought End of Time was really well done. It, it, it you know, it kind of discovered, rediscovered the relationship with my father. Um, it kind of bridged the gap with my relationship with the Quantum Ranger, and uh, it ended sadly, which very few shows do that now. You know, so they didn't end up together at the end, and that's just not normal. And to follow up on that one real quick, that was probably like a Disney change or something like that because. That was a little bit different from the formula of what House of Bond did, because he didn't like doing multi-parters, and that was kind of like a big part for, for the characters. So was that like the Disney? No, that was still that was still, Saban. Was still Saban. Yep. Yeah. So maybe that was maybe input from Disney. So, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah.
All right, you had a second question, so we're gonna go right back to you. Yes. Um, okay, did you ever meet the original um, uh, Time Red from Super Sentai? No. Oh. So I, I'm gonna throw this out there, a lot of the Power Rangers have not met their Sentai counterpart. Outside of Jew Ranger and Mighty Morphin, that's probably really about it for a lot of that. That's the original, and, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jew Ranger is uh, the one that they did in '92, which Mighty Morphin's based off of, and that's primarily because of Power Morphicon. Yeah. So, just okay. to kind of throw that out there too on that one, uh, you, and then I'll go to Bulk, and then I'll go to you. I do. Have Bulk. A, <laughs> I have a question about Super Mega Force that I noticed an error in. Why was the time uh, not Time Force? Why was um, Titanium Ranger's helmet not finished? I didn't even know that it wasn't finished. Yeah, <laughs> when, you, when you watch their helmets go up, they have that little piece that goes like this. And if you watch closely on, on the Super Mega Force episode, they have it down to here, then you see that little piece again. Oh. Huh. It feels to me that that was by design because they're, they're really good with the uniforms. It makes me feel like yeah. they did that on purpose. Oh, okay. there was a I didn't know if you knew or anything. No, yeah. so, interesting. I haven't watched it in since it aired. Yeah, I, I noticed very the fans know small everything. Things, yeah. so. That's good. I, I, I'll, I'll get to that one in 20 years when we finally get the Super <laughs> Mega Force on the podcast. <laughs> 20 years. Uh, Bulk, you had a question. First, do you mind if I record the question for my own purposes? No. no okay, no, thank no, you. No, no, no. All right. Thank you. So I want to ask you, um, what's your favorite like crossover? Whether it was Time Force with Lightspeed Rescue, Time Force with Wild Force, or Forever Red. Which which of the three would you have to pick? Well, I'll tell you what. It, the Forever Red is going to be epic always because it was the one time they put all the Red Rangers on screen together. So that was an amazing thing. Again, it should have been a, a much longer special. I think we could have done more with it. Had to realize it was going to have this kind of a long-term effect. Um, but I thought they did a really good job with Wild Force. The way we came back, um, we were all very involved in the episode, and um, you know, kind of answered some questions about Wes and Jen. So I, I thought they did a good job production value-wise in Wild Force, but I enjoyed uh, the, the Red Ranger being the best. Thank you. And then you, sir, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if you have, um, so I've, I've noticed you've been involved with like the Legend of the White Dragon, and you've working with a lot of other rangers and whatnot. Now that you know more of the, the other cast and whatnot, if you had to make your own team, now outside of the, the Time Force guys, who would you want to like team up with if you could hand select or? Hand select a team? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, so maybe not, not to necessarily lead or like co-lead, but if you had to be like, I want to be with you or you. Draft. Yeah. Draft so, teams. Okay, so it's, it's not, no one from Time Force. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> right? You could put some time for people in there, but you, I just don't. Well, care. it does all the time. Yeah, let's let's not do that because I've already been with them. So I would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, push them yeah. Right. <laughs> so let's do our own fun, fun make believe team. Yeah. So I would be the Red Ranger, of course. Yeah. Um, JDF would be in there, so he okay. would be my 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 first guy that I go to. Um, Pink Ranger would be Cat Catherine Sutherland. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Yellow Ranger would be Nakia. Okay. And uh, so, what colors have we? We, we got a blue. What, what, what color would uh, Jason be? Well, he'll, we'll make him the the white ranger, so we can okay. have five. So you, can have, so you can have six rangers. Okay. Six rangers. So Jay, me, Nikki, and Cat. I'm missing what? Black. Blue, black, black, black slash green. You're blue. missing blue, blue, black, blue, and black green. Yeah, blue and black. Yeah. Okay. So, um, black would be Azim Rizik from Mega Moves. And there's a simple explanation why he went from black to green, but we never learned how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's strictly because Azim is, is, I'm very, very close to him in real life, so he's a great guy. So I, I'll, I'll put him in there as my my, uh, my black ranger. Keep it as green. And then green. Well, oh, blue. I mean, blue, blue, because oh, yeah. black and green were interchangeable. That's true. The they were. There was also so blue, blue, but there was a toss up between black and green. Who would be my blue ranger? Don't worry, I'll be your blue. <laughs> David Yost hasn't been back for a while. Maybe reprise him as a Blue Ranger. We got David Yost. Um, we got Blake Foster. Who's other? Oh, some of the blues. I'm, I'm blanking on right now. There's uh, Salem Ward. Okay. Uh, uh, Salem Ward. Salem Ward blue. He went. In yeah, he was blue space. in space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna blue. avoid it when they kind of mixed over. Archie Cho, I think, was so his name. Archie. Yeah. Uh, you had, uh, Steve Cardenas was a Blue Ranger in Zio. 
That's right. Russell Lawrence. Bring Russell, Russell Lawrence back. He played Mega Russ. Defender. I've never met Russ. We, we can bring back Coda from Dragon. Uh, oh, you know what? Coda. I'll yeah. take Yoshi. Oh. Yoshi. Okay. that would be my six. Yep. So we got Yoshi. We got Yoshi, Azim, JDF, Cap, Cap, Nakia, Nakia, and me. And that's only because I couldn't have my time force. Right. <laughs> I had to have Michael Copan with me. Right. He would be my my glue guy. Yeah. The seven halfway through the season. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Power Rangers now at this point has like twenty seven Rangers at this point. So, it's true. I mean, yeah. You can you can have the time force with all the others now. Yeah. Yeah. Bulk. I gotta know, what was it like getting that lightning collection figure of Wes, having your own action figure, going, "This is me in toy form." <laughs> I gotta know. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm, not, I'm so angry because I just moved. And oh, I was going to sign it. <laughs> I was going to it, and I can't find it, and I was angry because I My wanted figure? you to sign it. Yeah, dude, they, they, um, you know, in the beginning when it came on Amazon, they were 19.99. Yep. yep. That's what I bought mine. And they are, they are not 19.99. Nope. <laughs> no, nope, sold out. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Are they even available anymore? I think so. Like through second, like secondary, like eBay and stuff. I don't think they're on Amazon through the actual provider anymore. Mine's locked away in a box because I just moved. Did you not bring it? I couldn't find it. I was looking at everything and I didn't have time. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to you right over there. Um, Let's see. Because Power Rangers started, and they were hiring martial artists, um, gymnasts, fighters, and dancers. dancers. And the audition for the original cast was, you know, 30 seconds go. Let's see you kick and jump and hit. And that was actually the premise of the one episode for Jason and Frank when uh, Tommy was auditioning for that commercial. Okay. Like that was pretty much the whole premise of that episode was to give you. It, it wasn't meant to be, but it was a full behind the curtain to show you what the auditions were actually like. At that yeah. Time for the show. Yeah, that's. It was just let's see you move. No, no, nothing else. By the time they got to our season, I think maybe season before this, the, the show went union. Um, and as a result of that, they can now bring in actors, people who have, who have screen time. Um, as a result. The, our audition was purely just a six-page audition. Everybody had the same read, girls, guys, every color, was the, a scene with Edward with my dad and the thing. So it was the same audition for everybody. Um, so there was no, they weren't checking out the way we can kick or punch or do anything. It was just about how good of an actors we were in the scene that had some emotional depth to it. So for Alex, to get to your question, they said, okay, come in and read this as Wes. Because I knew there was two cues in playing characters. Then we want you to read it, walk out of the room, shut the door, take a minute or two, come back in as Alex and do it again. And that's what they wanted to see how different you could be. Um, which, you know, 21 years ago, I would do it very differently today. I was like, I was a beginning actor. I, I, I think I just, what well, I was so spun out with Wes that the Alex thing worked out. But, um, so they really wanted to focus on how we could bring two different characters to, to it. Now, I would realize that, um, you know, everything you do as an actor has to be different for this character if you're trying to play them opposite each other. You know, the way that you sit, the way that you might cross your legs, the, main, the way you may talk, the cadence you give, versus someone like Alex, who's got to be a, a whole different person because of his military background, he's a captain, he's an officer. He's a much colder character. Yeah, and, um, but even the way you speak, even the way you have your pauses, everything has to be really different. Um, and I, I, I would definitely handle it differently today, having 20 years of experience versus then, but somehow whatever I did, it seemed to work. But they're very specific on the way you walk, the way you sit, um, just every mannerism with your body to, to make sure it was different than Wes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I got a question for you, and it's really big and debatable between me and a bunch of my friends. 
to do time force. Do you consider yourself the leader or Jen? See, oh. that Jen came back in time, oh, leaded the boy. Rangers, and then recruited I, I'm going to scoot this way because I'm going to say he became the leader. Well, I, you know, it's, um, you know, Alex is the leader of that group. He was the one that ran over there. Yeah. Um, and then when Alex was dead, Jen was the leader of the group that brought them back. Mm -hmm. And then once West took over as the Red Ranger, you could see in all the things, he's always in the middle. He knew the Red Ranger. Okay. Player. So, um, and we, Aaron and I always joke about that. Yeah. And it's funny because every time someone says that, I'm just like, uh, you know, she has fun with that. But, um, you know, I mean, Alex was dead at that moment and she definitely came back and led them. She's a phenomenal actress. Mm -hmm. And um, so when people say that, I just laugh at them. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> okay, I just needed some clearance so yeah, I could smack yeah. my friends in the face. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess by definition she would have been. Oh. Um, I mean, Alex would have been the leader of the group, but but when he was gone, she definitely took over, and then Alex was always kind of... And the problem with the Alex characters, they never got to really flush out that role. Yeah. Because, unfortunately, with Time Force, we were filming, and there was a, an upcoming potential writer strike mm. that was looming in, like, August. So we had a short amount of time to get these episodes done. Okay. And so, from my understanding, is they would have taken more time, flushed out the alpha character more because, but we didn't have the time because if the writer strike was, the contract was ending in say August 11th, mm -hmm. and we typically film until like two months after. So they had to, we were working 12 hour days, six days a week okay. to get everything done because if the strike happened and it took a year or a year and a half or two years, well, now we're two years older. Yeah. You don't know what's Jason Font's schedule. Am I available? Am I in a new series? Am I, did I quit acting? Like, yeah. So they're like, we gotta get this done. So things like Alex's uh, role got shortened because they just, we, we had a rush. Okay. It sucked because it would have been a lot of fun to really flush his character out. Um, you know, he saved Wes's dad's life. Oh, right? I forgot I mean, about that. Yeah, everyone forgets. Like he, 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 was, he, had, to, he had to be careful of the, you know, of, of making sure you don't mess up the time grid. He's watching his fiance fall in another man, another man take his spot. So this guy, he had to sit back and watch. Mm. If you kind of, you know, go with that, that he had to kind of well, watch this Well, just fall in love with another man. Wouldn't that be, he, she's falling in love again with him, but younger? Well, <laughs> it would have been his, um, you know, great, 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 10 times Grandfather, ah. right? Because it was a thousand years earlier. Oh, that's true. So, okay. so, and, and actually, um, Boom Comics. They fall in love with my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> so Boom He's a guilt. Actually, um, explores <laughs> the romance between um, Jen and Wes. Yeah. So if you haven't read, it, I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's actually Sins of the Future, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Sins of the Future. Like it was a very interesting yeah. read, looking at the relationship post. Time for season, so if you haven't read that, I recommend reading that. I want to go to you, and then I want to go to you, sir. Yeah, uh, so in the movie episode, if I'm wrong, my apologies. I think you had some specific, like actually, with Fuji Kamakoto, too. Um, so in my mind, it was like really intense guy directed at the scene, like really commanding. Does that have any basis in reality, or is he more laid back? Cool. Koichi? Yeah. He's the, he's the most laid back director I've ever met. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, that just really surprises me. Yeah, very laid back, very easy to work with, a lot of fun on set. Um, you know, and it's amazing how much he can store his mind. Uh, because a lot of guys have, you know, they, they you know they bring out all the boards or they have it written down. And he just kinda had everything. Um, so he was he's very, very good. And he's he's he lives in Japan now. Yeah. And he's doing a lot of a lot of movies out there. Yeah, I was just curious about that. I know, like, he was, like, acting dead character. I can't remember now. Maybe. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I was going to ask about the comics, but since you brought it up, I was like, oh. Um, Sorry, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. um, I was going to say, uh, so you, you've been coming back. Would, would you like to see, um, you, you've kind of evolved from, like, a ranger as a, as a red ranger into more of a leader, and then you're like, now, now you're doing stuff with, with the universe and, and kind of like uh, overall mentor. How would you like to advance it? Would you like to come back and just be that overarching like mentor figure, or would you like to get back into the field, so to speak, as you're like an active duty ranger? Or, I, you know, I, I how like. How would to, you like to see Wes evolve? Yeah, I would like to see him be right in the mix. 
you know, I'm not ready to be the, the instructor yet. Uh, I, I, I still feel like I, um, I look too young to, to go that route. But um, yeah, I, I think it'd be cool to do it. I, you know, superheroes are, are, you know, most of the superheroes we see today, you know, I mean, all the stuff in Marvel and, and uh, all these different series, these guys are all in their 40s and 50s. So people kind of have that with Ben Affleck and, and you know, Robert Downey, it's, 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 that's kind of where, where it is right now, except for like Spider-Man. So, um, cause he's, you know, Tom's younger, but um, I'd like to be heavily involved in it. And I think the fans would really embrace it. If they, oh, yeah. if they really do a good job of this 30th anniversary, which it's a standalone episode. There's nobody in this show but the, can I say that? But it's a, it's a standalone episode. Let me just keep my mind. Well, I think that one they did confirm that it was a standalone. They did, okay. Yeah, they did. So, so right there, don't see me anything else. <laughs> don't, don't get in trouble. Actually, I don't I, I don't know anything else other than, than you yeah, know, I don't know any plot points. They, they really, should, you know, but it's a standalone episode. You're not sharing screen with, you know, a bunch of other people. So, um, uh, hopefully they continue to do that. So, um, that gentleman right there had a question, and then uh, you'll be next. So, yeah. I would like, well, I guess expanding on that question, if that were to ever happen, would that mean that Eric and Wes would be like the teachers? Or the, yeah, I guess. Because that would actually help them expand their story if you actually think about it with the way that also time goes into things, how they are actually working together now and all that. I think the Eric, uh, Wes, um, expanding on that relationship and that, and you know, and Danny and I are, it's funny because I mean, we're, we're cast so perfectly. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's Eric and I'm Wes. That was the favorite part of my season. I mean, that was my favorite part of that season. Yeah. Um, it was, that relationship was fantastic and very similar to how we are in real life. <laughs> Again, you know, yes. yeah, the way that we, we are and it's, it's just, you know, Dan, Danny's Danny. It's, it's, it's oh, great. Like the last thing about Eric. Oh, yeah, he be the uh, he be the cool like, teacher. You guys grow together in those hundreds of episodes. It's like, and hearing that now is just like, it's kind of cool to hear the fact that you can hear actors grow closer as episodes grow. Little series, kind of short and sweet. Yeah, yeah. So for time, you're gonna be last question. And we're gonna talk about all three projects. Okay. Cool. So outside of Power Rangers, I remember this very clearly. I think it was a couple years after Time Force, you did a Bud Light commercial. Was there any other commercials you did that I missed? A lot, yeah. <laughs> I, it was a Miller Light commercial. Really? Oh. And it was a Sam Adams commercial, uh -huh. which was uh, played in Minnesota. Oh, it played in five markets, but it was considered a little too risky, so they cut oh, uh. it. So it was a Sam Adams commercial. Um, I did Miller Light, and then I just recently did Mike's Hard Lemonade. Oh, okay. okay. A lot of alcohol. Yes, I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I focus so much on that. Yeah. Commercial. <laughs> the Miller Light was when they were those referees, kind of those football commercials for the yeah. someone would be drinking the wrong beer and the refs would come in to the flag. Yeah. <laughs> so I was one of the refs that did it. And um, I remember the one where you guys were in the apartment building and you got up and you were going on about Bud or something. About what? Bud Light. Bud Light. No. Sam Adams was the one. Maybe that was the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. I don't know. I had to look it up and it said you're in a Bud Light commercial. Yeah. So. No. No. Miller Light. Um, Miller Lite, Sam Adams, and Mike's Hard Lemonade were the three. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. Then I have no clue where I got Bud Light from. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I don't know why I'm focused Miller Lite, Bud Light, I mean, you know. They're, they're, they're both the, the yeah. so much the same. So with that, a couple of upcoming projects. Uh, one yes. being Legend of the, of the White Dragon with Jason Day Frank and some of other former Power Ranger cast members. What can you tell us right now about that? And when do we have like a time frame where we can possibly see it coming out? Well, they're saying March. They're saying it's gonna come out in March, you know, with, with COVID, especially in LA. I don't know how shut down you guys were here, but we, we got really shut down. Um, and then for all sets, they had they start they added on a whole entire COVID team, which took a lot of, you know, 25% of your budget. Um, so we it took us a lot longer to get things filmed because of COVID. And uh, post-production's heavy now. Um, they're saying March. I don't know, because I'm not a part of a producing team, if they're going to go streaming or theaters. Uh, I was with Jay last week and he said that they're, they're talking about maybe doing some sort of tour where we go to different cities and run a movie uh -huh. theater. Kind of like what uh, Kevin Smith's doing. With yes. Right. Yeah. Which that, is so much fun to do. Yeah. And then a QA and a after. You so come here. Yes. Well, I would, I would come, come to DC. That's right. Oh, it is? Okay. I got to think we hit DC. Come to Minnesota. But, 
Yeah, Minneapolis. So, um, so we're not sure the format that we're going to do. Uh, once it's done, they're going to take it out and see who wants to buy it. That's kind of what happens. And then um, darker, grittier. It's not Power Rangers. It's a brand new universe. We do plan on making multiple films. Um, and that was our goal is to grow with our families. So we started out wanting to raise, you know, a hundred grand and make a web series. And uh, we, I think, ended up with almost $700,000. Wow. That's how much the fans came through. And then we had an independent producer come in and virtually double that. Wow. So as a result of that, we were like, how we, okay, we can make a feature. So then they had to go to work on the script and that's why it took so long because we didn't think we'd be doing that until right then. And, and another project was Austin St. John's The Order. Yes. Uh, what, what's the status on that? Because it's still under IMDb, but yeah. it's never come out. <laughs> they got, they had some problem. That's a, that's a question for Karen, actually. She was part of that. And um, they had some problems with uh, some something with the funding. I don't know, but they got shut down. And I think they're still trying to do something with it. But I, 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 I have not heard a thing. And then uh, you have one other project coming up called Rush Brigade. Rush Brigade. Yeah, yeah that's my own little, um, yeah, he's got the- I got the card. Oh, he's, he's, he's got cards of this over at his table. So when you go visit uh, Jason, go pick up a card. And I've met a bunch of you, so you already have the card. But we, you know, I wanted to, to make, a, I got approached by a, a young creator and uh, and somehow he was able to get a meeting with me and this guy was just sharp. He's a 27 year old and um, re really has this huge vision for this brand new cartoon that is around the Tooth Fairy's daughter. And uh, she's supposed to take over her Tooth Fairy's kingdom, the, the mom's kingdom, but she doesn't want to go that route. So it's kind of the, the moral battle that this little girl has with taking over this big empire and also fighting Emperor Decay, who's the, uh, in all these plaque monsters. So it's kind of a B movie meets Monsters, Inc. Oh. Yeah. It's a new animated cartoon series that we're creating right now, and uh, of course I'm one of the voices and producers in it, and we're hoping to make a new Paw Patrol, a new, brand new thing. Oh. So, and then uh, with oh. that, where can everyone okay. find you on social media? Social media. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure you do, it's at Jason Font. Uh, there's a lot of okay. fakes out there, so just mm. go with a little check mark. And then... Uh, are, are you sure about that one now? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> It, it, uh, with all the people being able to buy their verification badges now, the people can you can buy it, huh? Yeah, that, that just went out. Like Eight bucks. Yeah. Well, welcome to chaos. Yeah, I can verify the one on Facebook. So everyone can verify themselves. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I heard that Hold somebody on. actually just got a Nintendo one, yeah, and a Nintendo can't get it now, so they have to like so, go to Twitter and yeah, like. And somebody did the comic yeah. David. Oh the my. Well, yeah. what I meant was, is I can verify your fan page on Facebook because I'm a part of it. Okay. Well, Jason Vaughn fan size on Facebook. Um, the Jason Vaughn thing is Twitter, and Jason Vaughn is on Instagram. And then Brush Brigade, BrushBrigade.com is the new, uh, which we're just creating, so there's not a lot of followers yet, but we're, we're in the process of uh, getting all that done. Yep. And then, of course, everyone, uh, there's still more Power Rangers this weekend. Tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. in the main events room, we'll 101, we're going to have the Vulcan Skull Q&A session with Paul Schreier and Jason Darby. Don't miss that one. And then no. Sunday at Tropics. And then Sunday, I'm, yeah, I'm on stage with them, sorry. I'm going to be ducking a lot. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday, also in the main event room at 1.30 p.m., it'll be Johnny Young Bosch talking anime and Power Rangers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, my name is Michael. I'm from the podcast Voices from the Grid. Thank you so much for coming out to the Jason Font Q&A panel. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and look forward to seeing you all at the other panels. Yeah, guys, I'll see you out there. Thank you. I want to give a very special shout out to our Gold Ranger members, Dead Echo X-Ray, Anime King Nick, Austin White, and Chaos Draco. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and being Gold Ranger members. If you want shout outs like this at the end of the video, sign up to be a Gold Ranger member today. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this content, you know what to do. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. You can also become a member Please join the fan club support team right now. We have a Blue Ranger power up and a Gold Ranger power up. This is an awesome way to talk with the fans. Join a fan club official chat group. 
you can also be featured in our videos. At the end of the videos, I will shout you out. That's if you get the Gold Ranger Power Up membership. Go check it out. Go support the fan club. We love you guys, and thanks for watching. Peace.